Uh, hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to World 4, where the game gets a little bit weird because of the difficulty. Uh, I'm oh, just... that's because of the... that's how, why it gets weird? Uh, well, it gets weird because of that uh, problem I mentioned before, where you don't have access to the full game, uh, regardless of what difficulty you're on. Oh, yeah. This is the world where it happens, so... But anyway, uh, we are starting off with the castle, and our goal is to get all the relics. And, uh, of course, uh, because that's uh, the challenge, uh, there's seven of them. <laughs> Although, to be fair, three of them are, like, right here at the beginning. Oh my goodness, that is a really... That's a nasty jump. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys caught the edit, but I died twice and I chopped it out and reloaded. <laughs> I did not catch the edit. But... Okay. How do you how do you find so, uh, something like this? Uh, like I said, uh, this game is very well designed in both uh, uh, like enemies, uh, guns, and secrets. So. And speaking of enemies, these dog bulldogs are fucking horrible. Because uh, what they do is that they have a uh, rolling charge that does a fuck ton of damage, and it's annoying. <laughs> but uh, let's see. I think yeah, that there it goes. Fucking Jesus. Even with armor, still does like twenty uh, uh, points of damage. Ugh. <sighs> So how's life with you guys? <laughs> I can complain about many things, but I won't. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. I mean, it, it, yeah, I, I can agree with that. It's, um, yeah, you just gotta be like a, a water, uh, uh, you gotta be like a duck with water, you know? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I genuinely think that dwelling on things and complaining about it just reinforces the desert. Yeah, it's... It's one of those things where sometimes it's good to get things off of your chest, but at the same time it's like, uh... Afterwards you gotta find, like, a, uh, a solution to the problem. Yeah. But if I find a solution, people can feel pity for me. That is true. You guys ever notice how uh, women don't, they don't want you to present them with solutions, they just want you to listen to them. Yeah, yeah, I, I have heard yeah, that. It's a, <laughs> it's a mismatch, yeah, it's the, it's the, the common mismatch between, like, well, how uh, how women and men see conflict resolution? Because uh, it's not even about even about resolution, really. Like when we, when women talk talk about our problems, you like they have a bad day, they start talking about their day to you. They're they're hoping that you just that that you're gonna offer uh, the the emotional support of I am here, I listen, I am, and I know you're you're in the right. And I, so, uh, which to men is a very weird thing because if you're a man and you're complaining to another man about something, it's because it's a problem you want a solution for. Yeah. 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 Uh, like this. Uh. Anyway, uh, so these enemies here, these executioners, uh,. They're pretty nasty when they get really up close to you, but for whatever reason, you can only damage them if you shoot their stomach. I, I don't know why. Wait, does he have axes for hands? Or yeah, he has axes for hands, and if you get a certain distance away from them, uh, they will shoot grappling hooks at you. And also, we got a weird power-up. It's that uh, skull, and I think what it does is that it just allows you to do like double damage, which isn't too bad. But it's weird that they introduced uh, this power up like in level world four of five. So late. I've ever heard the story of French meat. French meat? Yeah, 
French meat. Oh, French meat. Okay, I thought you said French meat. And I was like, what, what the fuck is French meat? <laughs> Should I be worried? <laughs> uh, well, it's meat made from French people. Obviously. I did not realize that. Okay. French meat. Do you want it with or without the maggots? <laughs> Anyway, uh, so what's uh, fresh meat? Or... No, Franz Schmidt. Franz Schmidt. Yes, he oh. was an executioner from the 17th, 17th century. And uh, he left a diary with uh, a lot of the recordings of his of his daily life as, a, as an executioner, like the events of the day. And, and uh, I've been meaning to, i actually been thinking about buying that book because it sounds like a very interesting state. Because you, like, as you, uh, the perspective of, that we have about the job of an executioner today is very colored by, well, today's morality. Mm -hmm. because, people, because a lot of people think, like, it's so cruel how they just executed people. Well, it was kind of a necessary evil back in the day. Well, it's, uh, I mean, I personally don't see it as, like, a necessarily a bad thing. If it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, they did something completely reprehensible, and it's like, you caught them red-handed, then, like, you know what, at that point, it's like, it's fine. But there is, a, there is also the matter that, like, we're talking about uh, this guy, like, he lived in, like, 17th century, so 16-something. And uh, they did not necessarily have the most the the, the the conditions for many other forms of punishment. So like uh, uh, that's why I mentioned like uh, it was very much necessary evil in, in the context of uh, the period here where he when he lived. But the interesting thing is like basically the guy got uh, got stuck onto this job by chance hmm. because uh, because being an executioner was one of those jobs that everyone knew someone had to do but nobody had wanted to do it and being an executioner wasn't necessarily pleasant or well liked job well that's why they always had to cover their faces so that way they didn't get like the shit kicked out of them uh, for uh, executing uh, their uh, family members or whatever, right? It's the opposite of prestigious. Yeah. Uh, but there is, like, uh, uh, I was hearing about this book, I guess, and, uh, uh, apparently that there are days, like, for example, where I guess friend was just so tired, where he just wrote, a thief hang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that is the thing, when I was talking about, like, necessary evil of the time, because if punishment... If you talk about the um, death penalty as a punishment for, for theft nowadays, people find it impossible. Like, what the hell? Like, yeah, the guy... I mean, I personally would say, like, yeah, that, that might be uh, a little yeah. bit extreme, but even then, it's a lot yeah. better than what we're doing now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but back in, like, the 1600s, what are you gonna do with a thief? You, you like, you're gonna... You're gonna have... Leave him for, like few years in a cell being being fed by by the public that's not that's not a feasible day. thing to ask in those 1600 uh, I, I agree with you but i think a big part of that okay, is also the scarcity if you stole someone's cap oh yeah yeah it's a, like a, yeah, I think in battle, uh, for example, like you basically jeopardize someone's livelihood. So yeah, like um, yeah, you show me uh, Gok the um, uh, like uh, for the uh, what things cost in the medieval period, and like one cow was worth like a day's work or something like that, right? I don't recall. Uh, it was that, uh, weird, uh, text document that you sent me. Yeah. I do recall, like, the, 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 the there was, a uh, a point where, I uh, like, uh, oh, the drift, the difference in price in between, like, a, a war horse and a draft horse or something like 20 times. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because like a war horse is an animal specially bred for it. And then like uh, I think in the 14th, I don't know if in the 14th or 15th century, like a, a century later, a war horse was 10 times more expensive. <laughs> Oh, but yeah. uh, uh, looks like I uh, forgot to, uh, well, to be fair, I think this one was hard to cut out uh, as an edit, but yeah, I fucked up trying to get to that secret. Um, yeah, you have to find the one secret, then bunny hop your way on this rooftop to the other uh, uh, a tower to get to the other secret. <laughs> yeah. And crush your knees in the process. Yeah, like all good secrets. Uh, I... What were we talking about? Uh, we were talking about uh, draft horses and how much they cost versus uh, regular horses. Ah, uh, yeah. It, it is a... I don't... Oh, I, I think I showed this document to Kel, too. We were, uh, we were a bit, like, confused of how we were gonna make money work on the Dark Ages campaign. Yeah. So I showed him the document. It is like it's a really fascinating thing because uh, it, it it just it, it gives you a glimpse of how different different people's relationship with money was in the Middle Ages. Yeah. Well, they were also no, I don't think they were taxed as hard. At least not as bad as here. Like if you got a house, then uh, it wasn't like you had to pay rent and then taxes on top of taxes on top of taxes. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, uh, but, but also there the was the deal that, yeah, taxes were probably, were probably not as bad as they are today, honest to god. Well, <laughs> the, the peasants of the Middle Ages, Middle Ages probably paid, paid less than we do, unfortunately. Well, it's but, uh, technically, I saw some figures, I think correct, but the figures stated that what we pay nowadays in taxes was considered a like slavery debt. Like just the percentage oh of income. Hmm. Um Yeah, no, it was just uh, like like a good example as to like how insane taxes are, at least these days, it's sort of like yeah, the Boston tea tax, uh that's what helped start America kind of thing. And that was like what, like an extra five cents on tea or some shit like that. <laughs> yeah. It was a three percent tax. Yeah, and then meanwhile in Canada, it's uh, we have a fifteen percent. Uh, no, wait, my bad. A thirteen percent GST on uh, uh, goods and services, and that's for everything that you buy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think what is more fascinating about like, the thing of that document we're looking at is that uh, people in the Middle Ages were a lot more self self sufficient. Like, well, communities were a lot more self sufficient because nowadays, for example, we are in a, like we live in towns. There isn't much uh, unless you have a, a, like most people only plant stuff for as a hobby. Mm -hmm. they, they, they share the they do a garden for a hobby. So, yep. uh, people are a lot less uh, a lot less self sufficient in modern modern day uh, living in in town. So you're a lot you're a lot more dependent on uh, commerce with other settlements, with other places. In the Middle Ages, people were just most of the time what they needed in their village, they would make there, like. A, they would have the people, the artisans to do, to, to provide the most basic stuff. And most of the stuff they would do themselves. But, uh, and, uh, so, uh, their necessity of money was actually, like, uh, especially of inflated money, was a lot lower. By the way, I really hate the way that... I hate the fu this fucking door because it opens towards you, and if it closes, you can't open it. I fucking hate it so goddamn much. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to look at you so fast, but to see the past say I was utterly freaking out on this fucking door. Come on. <laughs> 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 
Why do you hate me? There we go, fuck. <laughs> that is some really wonky physics, what the hell? Uh, anyway, so yeah. You over Sam's misfortune. <laughs> I'm not sure why I thought it's so funny. It's just it's so relatable, you know. I thought in that same room. But anyway, so we got Rage, a really good uh, card, and with that, we will see you all next time. Have a nice night. Yes. Bye bye.